Hey guys, Mike Bills, welcome back to another quick video. Today we have a huge haul from Signature Solar. And with these components right here, we're gonna take our 40 volt off-grid solar power system to the next level. So basically what we have here is some solar panels and an inverter. So we're gonna go ahead and get everything off the pallet, get all the patching material off and take a quick look at everything and kind of explain what we're doing with it all. All right, if I can't tell already, we got ourselves a Flex Boss inverter. You need help? Oh, uh, that uh, it looked like you damaged that. I want to crack this thing open real quick. All right, in this box, we have the most powerful inverter you can get from Signature Solar. So this is going to be, oh, there's a mounting plate to put it on the wall or the jig, I should say. Oh my God, this thing looks way bigger in, per in person. Oh okay. That is massive. Okay. All right, guys, we have the EG4 Flex Boss 21. So this is gonna be replacing our 6,000 XP that's been a workhorse, but it's time to go bigger so we can power the whole house. And I think this will do it. All right, let's get the rest of the load. That's okay. Wait, should I take the plastic off? Oh, these are nice. High efficiency solar panel. Oh, this truck's kind of heavy. What was that? I'm trying. I want to step on the speed. Not the speed. We're going to go ahead and pull this thing up out of the box and set it on the workbench. Good. Oh, I just it up. Hang on. A little, a little higher than that, my boy. <laughs> this thing is an absolute unit of an inverter. It makes the EG4 6000 XP look puny. So what we have here is EG4's flagship inverter. This is the most powerful inverter that you can buy from Signature Solar's website. This is the EG4 Flex Boss 21. They also have a smaller Flex Boss 18. This is a split phase hybrid inverter. So it can do 120 and 240 volt loads, pretty much anything that your house will need or off-grid cabin or anything really. It's also a hybrid inverter. So it's fully grid interactive. You can back feed and be connected to the grid and it's all legal and everything as long as you do it correctly. The 21 insignia designates 21 kilowatts of solar. The inverter itself is actually a 12 kilowatt inverter. So it can do 12,000 watts continuous on battery only. But if you have solar input, you can actually get up to 16,000 watts of output out of the inverter. That's a huge amount of power. That's the main reason I went with this specific inverter is because I want to be able to run all the loads in my house with no compromise. I don't want to have to shut anything off, worry about anything kicking on while something else is on and overloading the inverter. We've been rocking the 6,000 for about a year now and it's been rock solid, but I just wanted something with more power and I just wanted to go all in. That way I don't have to buy another inverter for the foreseeable future. As far as PV inputs, you get three separate inputs. You get two inputs that are capable of 26 amps and you get one input that's capable of 15 amps with a max of 31 amps on the bigger inputs and 19 amps on the smaller input. As far as voltage, you can go up to 600 volts of PV voltage, which makes connecting a lot of panels to this very easy. It's a lot easier to series up a big string of panels and run one set of leads to your inverter versus having to use a bunch of paralleling boxes and uh, combiner boxes and all that. In my opinion, it's a lot easier. This unit is also water resistant. It's made to be mounted outside. In my case, it's gonna be mounted in the house. We're not gonna have to worry about any water, but if you did mount this on the outside of your house, it is weather rated. It's also equipped with a 90 amp grid pass-through. So if you wanna go into pass-through mode, you can have up to to 90 amp worth of circuits to it. We're not gonna get anywhere near that and we're more than likely not gonna use that feature anyways, but that's what it's capable of. Now this is specifically made to be used with the Grid Boss MID, which is a microgrid interconnection device. So if you do wanna back feed the grid and have all the grid interaction features of this inverter, you're gonna wanna run that and it's gonna make connecting it to your entire house and the grid very easy. But in my case, we're gonna be using this strictly for off-grid mode. And a lot of people might think this is overkill for that. And in fact it is because this is a hybrid inverter and it does have a bunch of grid interaction features. We're not actually gonna use any of those on the off-grid mode. This is an inverter that can grow is maybe one day down the future I do want to start using grid interaction I already have the inverter that can do it so that's kind of my thought process on that this unit also has a 10-year warranty so there's a lot of peace of mind that comes with that for me because I'm gonna be really using the heck out of this thing it's gonna be powering mostly if not all the loads in my house in order to reduce my bill as much as possible so they get a nice sleek front if you guys notice there's no screen you just get some indicator LEDs right here you do get a nice aluminum badge that looks really good now because there's no screen you have to do all the setup with your phone or through the website on the computer I did order the screen it's just not here yet because it was on back order at the time I'm making this video. It's really hard to kind of show you guys how massive this inverter actually is. It weighs over hundred pounds. It's almost too heavy for me to lift by myself. So it's a monster. It's a big old inverter. You got nice carrying handles right here and right here. So it does make it sort of easy, I guess, to grab it. Here's what the side looks like. Here's your spec label for anyone who's interested. You can pause that and read more on that. 
or check out Signature Solar's website and get all the specs on it as well from there. Here's what the back of the unit looks like. You have these little things right here and it comes with a wall bracket that's gonna sit like this on the wall and the inverter is just gonna hook up into that. And then there's some additional brackets that are gonna go here also to the wall to help support the bottom of the inverter, but all the way it's gonna be held at the top with using the included wall bracket, which I will show you guys. This is what the top of the unit looks like. These are gonna be the holes for to let the hot air out for cooling. On the bottom, I know some of it's covered up because I have this supported by that box, but there's four big cooling fans. Also in the box of the inverter, you get a really thick, nice user manual. These are gonna be current sensing probes that you're actually gonna to attach to your line one and line two going into your house. The reason you would use these is if you were gonna to try to use a net metering setup or a you wanted to maybe zero export setup, which is basically when the inverter doesn't actually export any to the grid. It can actually use these current sensors and detect when the current stops flowing or when the current starts to flow the reverse direction. These will be able to see that. The inverter will be able to see that and it can communicate according to how you have your settings set up. This is a way that some people have used to get away without having net metering. The problem is the inverters sometimes aren't fast enough to catch itself when it starts to backfeed. And if you have any sort of backfeeding, the power company will see that and you could have issues if you do not have a net metering agreement in place. You can use that for this. Maybe we will experiment with it in the future. So anyways, that's what those are. You get your big wall mount bracket, which you're definitely gonna need. Some more random brackets. And one last very important piece that you're definitely gonna need is your little Wi-Fi dongle. And this is gonna go in the side of the unit right here. And that's because the unit doesn't have a screen, that's actually how we're gonna connect to the unit and actually program all the settings and parameters that we want the inverter to have in it. That way this thing will work exactly how you want it to work, whatever kind of batteries you wanna work with, voltages, all that stuff can be pre-programmed and set using the dongle through the app or through the internet. And I will show you guys all that when we go to set this up. You also get some communication cables. More than likely one of these is for battery, the other one's for inverter to inverter. And you also get all the hardware to mount it to the wall. You get a couple different anchors, some big bolts things like that. On the side here, you do have your PV disconnect switch and your rapid shutdown button. What I did notice is there's no switch on the unit itself, but if we open this panel here, you do have a battery breaker. So I assume as soon as you click this on, the inverter is gonna start up. I would take this thing apart and show you guys the inside, but I don't wanna avoid my warranty, so we're not gonna do that. But I am gonna take this little cover off here and I'll show you all, all the inputs and outputs. All right, we got those screws removed, pop this little cover off. Okay, so here's a really good look at all your inputs and outputs. So right here, you have two massive battery inputs. So you have two negative posts two positive posts. And for cabling, I bought some massive two aught gauge cable. So that should be plenty for what I'm gonna use this thing for. Right here we have all our solar inputs. So you actually have five separate inputs, but only three MPPTs because MPPT1 and MPPT2, it's gonna internally parallel the string. So if you have two matching strings that are the same voltage and they prefer you to have the same brand and model of panel, you can connect them right here and it'll automatically parallel them. So that'll be nice. You don't have to run an external combiner box like we mentioned before. And then PV3 just has the one input. Plenty of inputs there for solar. These are gonna be all your communications are gonna be done right here. Battery to inverter, as well as inverter to inverter because you can parallel, I believe, up to 10 of these together. And then also this is where you're gonna connect your communication if you're gonna run this with the grid boss. It's kind of hard to see, but right here is a remote module for your RSD, your rapid shutdown. And you can actually buy RSD little transmitter or receiver deals that you can connect to the rest of your equipment. That way when you press the RSD button on the inverter, it automatically shuts everything down as well. Here are gonna be your grounding bars right here plenty of spots for grounding. You get a giant battery breaker right here that's gonna turn everything on and off. So you're gonna have a grid input as well as your load out. So these are gonna be your split phase. So you have two phases and a neutral right here. So phase to neutral is your 120, phase to phase is your 240. And then your grid input, same thing right there. You're gonna put two hots, your neutral, and then your ground right here. The grid port, I'm not gonna use, but if you were gonna have this in a hybrid setup, the grid is where you would connect it to the MID. And that's actually how you would backfeed to your MID and backfeed the grid and all that good stuff. But since we're not gonna be using any of that, we're only gonna make our connections right here. And they do give you very beefy terminals in order to make your connections. You are gonna have to set up a load center with this because you only have these no actual plugs or anything like that. And that's really it guys, it's very simple. There's really not much more than that that you have to hook up. So it makes installing this very easy. And that was kind of the whole idea of having your grid boss and your flex boss separately. The flex boss is just the inverter and the grid boss will have all the switching gear for doing a hybrid install. And that's really it as far as specs and a basic rundown of the inverter. Now I'm gonna go ahead and mount this on a hand truck and connect a battery to it. And we're actually gonna go through a little bit of the setup. And then I'm gonna connect a power strip so we can add a load to it and see this thing actually outputting power. In a future video, we're gonna do a full install on this, but the install is gonna be quite comprehensive because we have to disconnect and take apart my old system and clear out a bunch of space. But I do still wanna demonstrate the inverter working in this video, so we're gonna do that. One other thing I did forget to mention while reading through the manual is this thing has a pretty large surge capacity. So this thing can surge 13,200 watts. Now this is, I'm assuming, battery only, 12 minutes. 
15,000 watts for six minutes, 18,000 watts for one second, and 24,000 watts for half a second. Like I said, I'm assuming that's just battery because obviously with solar and battery, this thing can do 16,000 watts continuous. And I've actually seen some other videos of a guy demonstrating that. I do believe that. I don't ever plan to get anywhere near close to that. Even with all my appliances running, I don't think I could get 16,000 watts. My house is pretty small. One other thing too, when we go to connect a battery to it is I'm actually gonna measure the idle consumption of the inverter. We're actually gonna get to see what that is in real time. All right, so it's definitely not recommended to do this, but I'm just gonna do this so we can kind of mess around with this. But I'm gonna take our wall mount, the arrow is gonna face up, and we're gonna to mount it to our little hand cart here so we can hang the inverter on the hand cart and just do a little bit of experimenting with the inverter. All right, guys, like I said, I don't recommend you guys do this at home. We're just doing this so we can mess around with it. But here we go, we're gonna get the inverter hung. So we literally have to pick it up and just hang it right here on its mount. Hopefully it's not too difficult. <clears throat> There we go, it's on our hand cart. Let me make sure it's not too front heavy. No, that's definitely perfectly safe. Definitely do not recommend doing this, guys, but now I'm gonna go ahead and find us a battery and get this thing all connected up so we can power it up. I think I'm the first person on YouTube to put the Flex Boss on a hand cart, make it portable. It's definitely not light. <clears throat> all right, we have a 100 amp hour battery server rack battery and a power strip right here. Once again, guys, I'm literally hooking this up just to demonstrate the inverter. This is 100% not recommended how you do it. So just keep that in mind. We will do a full install of this later, like I said before. I just want to produce a little bit of power with it and see what it does. So this is far from ideal. I'm gonna go ahead and get some cables so we can connect the battery to the inverter and then power power strip. I'm just gonna go to L1 neutral and ground and that's it. Since we're only gonna be using 120 volts. All right guys, that's it, we're all wired up. Very simple because we're in off-grid mode. We have all our connections made, so now we can go ahead and turn everything on. So I'm gonna turn the battery on first. We're at 55%, I'm gonna turn the battery breaker on. Keep in mind, as soon as I flip that on, this is now all live, so you don't wanna to touch anything or be near any of this. I need to actually put the cover back on for safety. And look at that, we got a yellow warning light and a green flashing normal light. So now I need to connect the Wi-Fi dongle so we can get this thing set up to actually work. I'm gonna go grab that real quick. Go ahead and get this guy installed. With the Wi-Fi dongle installed and the unit turned on, I'm gonna go ahead and go into the EG4 app and I'm gonna reconnect to this inverter. Since I've never connected to it, I gotta set it up like a fresh unit. And you actually have to log out of your account in order to set up a new device. And once you're logged out, the page is gonna look like this. We're just gonna go to dongle connect. And then I need to match the serial number on the device to the one it's finding. And there it is. Now I'm actually gonna connect the dongle to the Wi-Fi. Okay, so I went ahead and connected the Wi-Fi to the dongle. It said success. It says dongle will restart later. Okay, now I think we can go back and log into the app. I got the dongle fully set up in the app, so we're gonna go ahead and go on the desktop where there's way more settings, and we're gonna go through and get this thing actually working. Being this thing is a hybrid inverter, it's probably gonna have a ton of different settings that you can actually fine tune for your specific setup. So that's a really good thing, but it is something I'm gonna have to learn as well. All right guys, our Flexboss 21 is officially running, so I did have to go through a couple of settings. I kept having a warning message, but I got that to go away. We also did the firmware upgrade on the inverter, so this thing's fully updated. 100% ready to go. So we have our green normal status light. We can connect and load now. But before I connect and load, I'm gonna check the standby current use. I'm gonna go into the Bluetooth app of the battery and see how much power this thing's actually using. And if you guys look, we're using about 68 watts of power. Not terrible considering this is a 12 kilowatt inverter. Next, I have the space heater connected. We're gonna go ahead and turn that on. And it seems to be powering the space heater just fine. We're using 1400 watts according to the Bluetooth app on the phone. And what's crazy about this thing, guys, is below a certain power limit, which I'm not quite sure what the power limit is yet, the fans aren't even running, so this thing is completely silent right now. The only noise I hear is the heater and the background inverter running, all my other loads that are connected to that. But other than that, this thing's completely silent. Obviously, I'm not gonna know how loud it is until we fully get it connected, get some solar input, and actually put some real loads in the inverter. So, so far, that's really awesome how quiet it is. I do really like that. But yeah, that's really it, guys. There's really not much more to show. Very excited to get this thing fully commissioned. We just have to tear apart our old system first and make all the space on the wall. Now, some people might be asking, why don't you just go grid tie, use a grid boss, or some sort of connection device and connect to the grid? The thing is, in Texas, a lot of the net metering plans, which are the plans that you have to use when you backfeed to the grid, charge you more per kilowatt hour when you're not generating more than you're using. And currently, I don't have a ton of panels to be able to offset 100% of my electricity if I was gonna backfeed. I'd have to switch my plan. Not only that, this would all have to get installed and licensed by a professional and inspected and all that stuff. And I'm really just not trying to do that much hardwiring to the house. 
I'm trying to make this as off grid, simple to use as possible. And then when I want to, I will connect to the house with a safe and legal way. And we are just going to back up the house load separate from the grid. So we don't got to do any sort of net metering. We don't got to have any of those agreements in place. And at least for what I'm doing, I think that's going to work better. Now in the future, if we ever do want to go to a grid tied setup and back feed, we can always upgrade that later. It's just good that we have an inverter that's capable of doing it. But a lot of people don't realize that you can also use these for off-grid use as well. And that's really it for the inverter for right now. So in a future video, we're actually going to completely tear down my old setup. So all this has to come apart and get taken apart. And then I need to figure out how I want to mount the inverter. If I'm going to mount it straight to the wall, do I want to put a piece of wood or cement board to the wall first and then mount it or try to build a whole other car to hold the inverter? I'm not really sure yet. Since I have so many extra batteries now, it's starting to become kind of a pain. And the next setup I build is more than likely gonna be the last setup I build. So I need it to be really, really nice, very clean, very safe, easy to work on. So it's gotta check a lot of blocks. So it's gonna take me a while to kind of figure out and gather all the pieces to do that. So I don't know how long it's gonna take me to actually get this thing up and going. I wanna get it done sooner than later because we already have it and I wanna be able to run the house. As far as the other part of the hall, these are the solar panels. These are Harperion 400 watt panels. And these are gonna be used on our solar pergola in the backyard to go ahead and get that project done. So hopefully we'll have all of our solar panels completely hooked up, ready to go, producing as much power as we can make. Since we're gonna be running the house, we're gonna to need to make as much power as we can. So if we have a really heavy day of power usage, I need to be able to quickly recharge the batteries and keep the lights on. These are really nice panels. We've already used five of these in the past. I have four more, that makes nine. As far as batteries go, just a small update on the batteries. We just commissioned this Yinxang battery. This is a DOI 48 volt version two box with a JK BMS, LF 314 amp hour cells. This thing's super awesome. I did a full video on this. That's gonna be coming out soon. Sorry, it's a little dark over here, but we also have a Watt Cycle 48 volt battery in this box. It's a golf cart battery. We're gonna be doing a review and testing on that along with a charger. We have another 100 amp hour battery in this box to review as well. But we got a lot of other projects to finish on the channel, guys. I really, really wanna get all these video reviews done, all this stuff set up. My house is kind of a wreck right now, if I'm being completely honest. The solar panels outside are a complete wreck, if I'm being completely honest, at least on the new pergola. So hopefully by the time we get around to getting all this stuff set up and done, we're gonna have a really, really awesome setup and I'm so excited to show you guys and bring you guys along on the adventure as we get all this stuff commissioned all this stuff cleaned up and built hopefully together we can make a really cool system I can get you guys this feedback and I can also provide feedback to you guys by the time y'all watch this video we're over 10,000 subscribers I never thought I'd make it this far on YouTube so thank y'all so much for watching and if you're still watching this video you guys are the real MVPs this video is already gonna be pretty long I'm sorry if I'm just kind of rambling at this point but I really wanted to show as much as I could possible before we kind of grind and get a lot of work done so i'm very thankful for you guys i'm very excited to get all this stuff up and running again and get the flex boss commission because this thing's a beast it was not cheap but this should take us very far into the future and i'm very excited about that that's going to do it for this video guys let me know what y'all think about the haul from signature solar and the components that we picked, is it gonna to be too much or too little for the system that we have planned? I still have a lot of components to source for this. We have to build a complete new load center and then we have to build a safe way to back feed the house and a legal way as well. We're not gonna do anything sketchy on the channel. I promise you guys that. So there's gonna be a video very soon of us getting this thing hooked up. So if you're more excited to watch this thing get powered up, that's coming very soon. But that's it guys. Thank y'all so much for watching and I'll see y'all in the next video.